Okay. <laughs> Hi. Really? Eighties. Bay City Rollers, was it eighties or seventies? Seventies. <laughs> Sorry. You had the time travel. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I only remember my when my sisters brought them in. Bay City Rollers. <laughs> No, what, what is what is the eighties? What is your eighties favorite? What was ours? Well, it was all kinds, wasn't yeah. it? Many, many Mel Mel and Kim, Bell Stars, Aha, 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 Aha. Wow. Interesting, yeah, yeah. Human League. That's not my choice, then. So. <laughs> I know we ask this every week, but again. More reports about Emery Chan and his future. What is the latest? Has he agreed to join Juventus? Because again, there are the reports that are coming out. No. I, I didn't came in my office and say so. I made it up now. Yeah. Well, nothing new about that. You still expect then that you could persuade him to stay here and sign a new deal? In much the same way, I suppose, as Arsenal did with Ozil, because that wasn't expected. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so. I think um, still everything is possible, but that's nothing, nothing else to say about. So in the moment when we have to say something, and we can say it, but it's nothing. There's no decision made so far. Otherwise, we would have said it. Seems to be a lot of interest in your goalkeeping consultant this week. Can you tell us what exactly his role is? Well, I'm not sure that is uh, uh, why. I think people have taken an interest in it, just with the development of your goalkeepers and whether he's identifying other targets to come in in the summer as well. And there's often been talk about your goalkeepers, so I think people are interested in exactly what Hans does, what kind of role he has with you guys. Giving advice for the scouting department, nothing else. It's not that he makes any decisions or something like that, he can't, that's how it is. But um, goalkeeping is a special position. Um, and um, so I think it makes sense that we have in the scouting department somebody who is more responsible for that. But it's not about um, that he comes in and says, oh, I found it, so now we get the, this is our new number one. We have a lot of goalkeepers in the club for different age groups, and that's what, that's what his job is, first of all. And uh, but, uh, the only um, responsible for goalkeeper training in the first team is, is John Achtenberg and for, for the, the head of scouting we have other we have other people but they he brings in his, all the information he can get that's all so we have people for Germany we have people for Austria we have people for each country and we have people for goalkeeping um, in all these countries so that's all and Hans is this guy obviously you have a number of ex Southampton players here but for Virgil van Dijk it's his first time going back there what do you expect it to be like for him that, that first time back at Oh, I, I don't know exactly, but probably it will not be the most friendly. Uh, it's a little bit, I'm not sure. It's people in Southampton, as I, since I'm in, they were always really nice with Kleine. I don't know exactly why. Adam Lalana, obviously, they, they missed most. Dian Lovren, there. Yeah. So, um, Sadio Mane, I think, was OK. I'm not 100% sure anymore. Um, and now, yeah, virtually, it's the last one, so that's how it is. I, I really understand that, but it's nothing we, we really think about. It's, um, it will be more normal in the future, but now we have to go there and, and, and play football and nothing else. I think it's uh, absolutely... I don't think that anybody in um, Southampton say we, we've stolen him or something. It was quite... Uh, yeah, a very public deal. So, and, and the numbers, even when they are never one hundred percent right, are, I think, okay. So they maybe they are really happy. <laughs> and say thank you uh, for all the money we have now, or whatever. That is it could be the other way around. But um, since I'm since I'm in, and not only the players we have, but obviously the the, the area there and, and and Southampton especially, they have what half the Premier League. If I ask where is he coming from, yeah, Southampton. Wow. So there are obviously a few more players. Uh, Ox is from there as well, even when he took a little a different way. But um, so I'm not sure. Walcott as well? Mr. Walcott? Yeah. Though there are a few huh? good players from, from these areas. So, um, 
maybe it should have a scouting department directly in Southampton very early, starting very early. But it's just, it, it, it just shows how good the work is they do there. And that's more the problem we have at the weekend. Yeah. Sure. The Southampton fans have been made up to hear you suggested you should have a, a scouting department down there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, sorry. <laughs> Jürgen, how highly do you regard Southampton this season? They had a bit of a sticky start, but they seem to be pulling out of trouble now. Sorry, sorry. So how highly do you regard Southampton? Yeah, they had a, what is a sticky, sticky start, OK? Um, yeah, um, meanwhile, since in 2018, I think especially the results are absolutely OK, um, or more than OK, so quite... Um, Tottenham draw, stuff like that at home, so it's, it's good, and um, it's, it's a good team. To be honest, uh, uh, that's really a good team. Don't get it 100% why they are, why they are in the region. They are off the table. So, but it's a um, difficult season, obviously for all of us and, and for Southampton as well. You you win two games and you are can be a little bit more relaxed for a week or so, and then you lose two games and you are in the middle of the chaos again. So that's a situation that only that's the, the important thing for us to know. So they will 100% go for it. Nothing. It will be not only because of the special relationship between Liverpool and Southampton, it will be not a friendly game. So that's how it is. We fight for everything, they fight for everything. But I said the quality of the squad is, is really, really good. And um, yeah, probably well, they will show it but, uh, or want to show it. But um, we have um, our own targets. And it's, it's really, again, very, very interesting challenge. Um, we know a lot about Southampton, the way they play. It's a football playing side. It's quite rare. Bournemouth and Southampton, the two teams in this area of the uh, of the table, still football playing. Um, yes, build up long, but then good players on the pitch, good options, different options. Ward Prowse, Davies, me and my Hoiberg, uh, more involved, different systems, and all that stuff. So that's um, a job to do for sure. And I'm guessing there'll be growing anticipation amongst the fans. You've got the Champions League next week, you've got Porto. How difficult is it for you and the players just to completely forget about Champions League and focus on Premier League? Because again, I'm assuming the players inevitably will just be starting to think about Champions League, won't they? Uh, I don't. So maybe that's the first thing. That's the only thing I really can say. And I have a few experiences with European football. I never thought about the European game of the week after um, or the few days after it's always the main focus on the next game that's in this case Southampton you cannot and we will not uh, think about a Champions League game so we have we have the squad we have and we have to use it but it's not about rotating it's a completely normal week uh, between the two games now and that means um, full power whatever it will be but um, uh, we will not think about Porter because yeah you cannot we have um, there are only important games left in the Premier League. Yeah, yeah. And that's how it is in the Champions League. Uh, but I, well, we didn't think about Porto so far. We have enough time after the game. It won't affect your selection at all. No. Yeah. Talking of selection, does Adam Lallana come into your thoughts with the, the starting eleven this weekend? Bearing in mind what happened this week, and I know there was that little bit of provocation as well in that under-23 <laughs> game. Yeah, we wanted him, to, not only him, we wanted for all the boys, um, actually for Alberto Moreno as well, but he had a little problem, so he, he couldn't play then there, so it was not. Um, we wanted to have, to have match time, he had <laughs> 60 minutes, I think, round about. It's not nice. I spoke to him, of course, about that. That's not how it should be. He's not happy about it. Um, but I mean, I understand. Why it happened, that's what I thought in the first moment. It was not the challenge before the situation, there was another challenge before that. So, um, how was that? Adam is not happy about the, uh, the reaction, as I was not happy about it, but it doesn't change my, my mind about, uh, about Adam, of course. So, he is on the way back. So, that's how it is again <laughs> this season. So, he was already a few times back, and then we were all of it a little bit early, so we will not rush it, for sure not. Um, he is for sure an option for the squad if he's an option for the, for, for the um, first 11. Um, I rather would think not in the moment, but maybe I have I can sleep twice before we play Southampton, so maybe I change my mind in this case. We'll see. It's in a, actually how it always is with Adam, in a good shape, so he's really quick, he looks fresh, he looks good, and you think, oh, 
what can we do with them? But we, we did it twice. Now I don't think it was too early when we when we did it, um, but it happened twice. So we need to to settle a little uh, a little bit and then um, use Adam. They are still I don't know. Hopefully, around about 18, 19, 20 games uh, to go for us. That's enough for him as well. A thought: um, Does it change your view with putting senior players in in matches like that? Bearing in mind, you know, the pr provocation that no, he no, reacted to. No, 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 no. It's, it was not. It was match match practice. So it, it, it give them a little bit of time to play. I would have, would have never said, "Okay, come on, Adam, go alone with the boys." So what we had, Ingsi was there, Tom Solanke was there. Even it's not, they're all younger and stuff like. But Adam didn't play football. And he was fine with it. It was had nothing to do with that he was angry that he had to play U23. So what? Absolutely not. It's not the the the. the, the the luck, most lucky season for Panama Milan so far. That's that's how it is, and of course there's kind of frustration in in, in him. But um, it's how I said. It, there's nothing good to say about the reaction. But as a former footballer, I when I saw the the other challenge, then to be honest, I understand at least a little bit. It's not to excuse, but we all did when we played football. We all did a few things we are not proud of, but, uh, proud of, um, and. Um, as long as nobody seriously then injured afterwards, there will be um, after a few days nobody will speak about it again, and that doesn't change my mind. If they need match time, then they will get it, even in the U23s. Thank you. Yeah, again, uh, how much encouragement did you take from last week's defensive display for your team? You're up against Tottenham, one of the uh, the best attacking teams in the country. They've got maybe the best right back in terms of getting crosses in and Liverpool in the main defended really well. I know the individual mistakes which you're always going to get, but generally the team's defending. How impressed were you? Our problem in that game was not our, it was not our defending, that's true. Our game our problem in the game in the Tottenham game but that we didn't play football in the second half anymore. So so that means that's the best kind of defending by the way, keep the ball. Um, we didn't do that good enough. So um, that's what I was not too happy with. Um, individual mistakes around the goals. If you mean that it was a mistake of Dian Lovren touching the ball, then I really don't get this. Um, um, and the other mistake, I don't know. Uh, first goal, so it was a fantastic strike. We have to accept that. You can shoot from nearly. Um, from the other stand, uh, and it was a fantastic goal. Uh, we have to we have to respect that. So yes, but I, I don't I don't celebrate good defending. Was it good? We could have defended even better. I know that, but it was good enough to give them not a lot of chances. Even when they played, yeah, if they play they played better in the second half. Well, they had more from the game. First of all, because we didn't play as much football as we did in the first half anymore. And um, then second half, yes, they, I can remember a lot of chances for Tottenham. That's true, but they scored twice. Got another penalty, so that's how it is. We have to, to get that. But yeah, our defending in, is most of the time <laughs> really good. Um, we shots on target um, from other from opponents. I think we are yeah, we have the second least number. So that does. It's not that people that, that other teams shoot like crazy on our goal. So we most of the time we defend well. And a few decisive moments, obviously, um, a few things have nearly to go to to the goals we concede. That's a, that's another truth, but um, Southampton will. This game, we need to be really spot on in both parts of the game. So because they play football, it means we need to defend in midfield. Sometimes a little bit deeper, um, really concentrated, really together, not speculating, rather anticipating in situations and um, win balls in interesting situations. They they take a little bit of a risk in, in their in their own offensive play. And using that, and of course, when we have the ball, we have to play football. That's that's one hundred percent true. And that's the, that's the things we spoke about. Not too much about the Tottenham game. How would you assess the progress that the Trent Alexander-Arnold's making? He was part of that that good performance last week, and and at both ends of the pitch, I mean, is is passing the first half for Milner and the cross for Firmino with the, the near post header. He really is coming on, even though he doesn't play every week. He's you know he's. He's in some ways it's good for him that he doesn't have to play every week, so that's 100%. He's still, is he, still a young boy, but um, he improved a lot, especially in training in the last few months. In the beginning, he trained a little bit like a kid, 
ups and downs like that. Meanwhile, it's consistency, consistent high level, um, good attitude. And then, yeah, he can show his skills and um, you know, crossing, obviously, all the football. The, the football part of the position is um, seems to be pretty easy for him. Eh? So he's really quick, very quick, and fantastic right foot. Even the left foot is not too bad. So um, really good crosses, football smart, good view for the four spaces, stuff like that. So that's all good. But a lot to learn, of course. But for us, it's very important. We have the two youngest, um, probably fullbacks, pretty much in the in the league, and and they now Joe is out. Um, and so it makes it's really good that we have Trent, and uh, he he developed a lot, like Joe did, to be honest. Um, different player, obviously, but both can play the position, and it, that helps us a lot. And now he's in charge, obviously, and um, good for us, good for him, and hopefully he can deliver again. Um, when a player goes back to a form of club, and I think specifically Virgil now, do you have to sort of raise that issue before the game? With players, no, we, we we actually um, we no no ex Southampton player will play in Southampton on Sunday. Do we have that a team? <laughs> <laughs> will we have that a team? I'm not sure. <laughs> so yes, it's it's obviously quite special. It was not on purpose. So it just it just happened, and that's now that's two times a year. Or last season there was four times, I think. Um, that we that we play against Southampton, so it's it's quite a, a strange thing. Yes, I will for sure talk to Virgil about it. With the other players, I didn't talk about it because I didn't know before. I didn't look where they're all coming from. I didn't know about the special story. And um, meanwhile, I know it. And um, so yes, I, I will talk about it, and then we will see. And um, um, how is that? Even with centre halves, we have a problem. If you say you know Southampton players, then. I have only two left. It's not too cool. We will, we will see. I will talk to him, of course. From what we've seen so far, on the pitch, he looks like the sort of player who can you know, handle anything that's thrown at him anyway. In terms of that. Sorry. Just the way the way he is. On, we've seen him on the pitch so far. The way he plays, he looks like he can handle anything that's thrown at him in terms of. You know, yeah, all human beings. It's, it's nice. Uh, better you think that than something else. But we are, we are all human beings. We're influenced by circumstances. So it means, yeah, it will not, it will, for him not be a normal game. How can it be? Yeah, it was a, it was a special story. Most of the time, really, really positive, and um, then the end, not that positive. Probably with a very positive end. If you want to see it like this, so they have still really good centre halves. Yeah, so Stevens. All, it, all, all these guys, there are still really good players there, so for them it was the perfect business if you want, but yeah, the, the, I think how football fans are, they want to disturb everything, what we will try to do, that's how they try to help their team and probably they will whistle. You know, it, is it nice? I don't think so. Would it have influence? I don't think so, but um, we, will, we will see. So it's, but we cannot, we cannot make it too big. And I don't make it too big. Yes, it's it's quite special, and I, I know that. But that's all. So we really think much more about the, the football, really football, the real football game, and what we have to do, and not about how can we uh, avoid different um, situations from outside because we don't have influence. We need to talk. If yes, about a few things. If we have done that, we have to accept it how it is. Loud, not nice, maybe, but still we have to play football. And that's it. Yes, he was running outside, but not with the team. But that means he's close, and um, how it always is. Then um, I think it's. Uh, yeah, it's no, I don't think there's a chance for for Sunday if they don't come in and say the running was that good. Um, so you can have him this afternoon as well. Um, but then part of course is a chance. We'll see. Uh, who else? Sorry? Clapping. 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 Uh, Raggy train uh, trained, yes. Trained um, the last two days. So um, that's it. Alberto, yeah, is, he needed only uh, two days again and um, looked good yesterday. Uh, yeah, that's it. Nothing, nothing else in the moment. So that's good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome.